what spirit were you led by today, my friend? And a lot of people here sh start strutting and put on a swagger, put on a tough man. They act as though they're afraid of nothing, but they're afraid to investigate the word of God for fear that their deeds would be exposed. The, uh, Christ forgiveness of Christ's forgiveness. Christ forgiveness. Christ forgiveness ministry. Christ forgiveness ministry. Christ forgiveness ministry. Stop playing games with the living God. Stop playing games. Stop playing games. Stop playing games. Stop playing games of your youth. Acting so worldly. Acting like a child. Acting like a child just running and throwing fits over nothing. Running and throwing fits looking to seek your own pleasures and your own way and your own desires. And denying the finished work on the cross. Denying the Lord Jesus Christ who begot you from the grave for those who believe on him. For those who profess his holy and beloved name. For those who profess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall not see death, but shall see everlasting life. Call upon the name of the Lord. For many people here call themselves a form of Christian. Call themselves somebody who believes in a God or God or maybe their own significance. But let me tell you this, that there's no escaping the truth. That when we enter this world, we are held accountable to that which is true. And truth is not an ambiguous thing. Truth is sure. Truth is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's the only way that you can know your own heart. For the heart is deceitful above all things and no man can know it. But the Word of God can show you the desires of your heart. For you don't even know the desires of your own heart. But the Word of God will reveal that to you. The Word of God will show you the discernment of your thoughts. For you don't even know how to hold your, your thoughts captive. But the Word of God will show you where your thoughts are coming from. For the voices you hear in your head. The desires within your head. What goes on within your head is led by a spirit is led by a spirit, is indeed spiritual. And what spirit are you led by? How are you led here today? How are you led here today to sit on the brick wall upon hours and smoking and looking for drugs and for looking for some liquor? What spirit led you today to sit on the brick wall and stare at people standing in an endless line waiting to get into a club? What spirit were you led by today, my friend? So the path is narrow. That those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And a lot of people here sh start strutting and put on a swagger, put on a tough man, put on a complex, put on envy, put on bravado. But they won't get into the Word of God because they're afraid. They're a liar and they live as a hypocrite. They act as though they're afraid of nothing, but they're afraid to investigate the Word of God for fear that their deeds would be exposed. How many cowards do we have out here today who are afraid to investigate the Word of God for fear that their own deeds would be exposed? How many cowards do we have out here today who are afraid to investigate the Word of God for the, the righteous man says, God, not my will, but your will be done. How many cowards out here today are afraid to let their own desires go? To believe God. To believe Him at His word. To believe He is who He says He is. To believe that He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek Him. To take Him at His word. Try Him, and He'll reveal Himself to you. But are you too afraid to even try the living God? A lot of people here want to act so tough with their bravado and their complex that they've created within their own imagination off of things that they've witnessed on TV. They're just a mere regurgitation of what is presented to them through the media and through TV. Your swagger is a regurgitation of what you've seen in the mall or what you've seen on TV. That's why the Lord has called us out of the world, called us out of the hands of man. He's came to deliver us. Are you just a regurgitation of what you see on TV? Is everything in your mind a regurgitation of what you hear in music? But God has called us to a holy calling. He's called us to come out of the world. 
He's called us out of slavery of man. So you enslave yourself when you have friendship with the world. You enslave yourself when you become the world. The Lord has called us out of the idealism of men. The Lord has called us out of the presupposition of man. The Lord has called us out of how the world views us. The Lord has called us out of the culture of this world, out of the culture of your own skin color, out of the culture of your family. For he said, if you have friendship with the world, you're an enmity of them. You're an enemy of God. You oppose God. He's called us out because when you're within, you're a slave. He came to deliver. The Lord came to deliver. And he came with a sword. The Lord did not come to bring peace on earth. As what you see in the religion of today, the religion of this culture, the spirit of this age, who comes to bring peace and justice, that's a lie from hell. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the Prince of Peace, didn't even come here to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And that sword was the word of God. To rightfully discern that which is good and that which is evil. Where does your life stand? For God has called us to identify ourselves with the word of God. To try our actions, to try our thoughts with the word of God. Is your life and your thoughts and the motives of your heart within the world or is it with God? For there will be a day when you will stand up to the Lord God Almighty. And the friends that you are sitting here on the brick wall with, the friends you're standing in line with won't be there with you before judgment. Even your family members who pray for you will not be there with you when you stand before God in judgment. There's a reason why people get angry at the simplicity of the cross. When the Lord Jesus Christ came and healed the sick and raised the dead and there was no corruption within him, the natural man put Jesus, the perfect man, to death. Does that make any sense? Does it make any sense at all that a perfect man who came to heal, who came, who, who, who came to heal the brokenhearted, to raise the dead, to do away with the corruption of man and bring on newness of life, that the perfect man without blemish was put to death. Does that make any sense? The answer is no. Because that hatred stems from a supernatural source. That supernatural source is the devil. That devil appears as an angel of light. When people get angry, they feel like their emotions are justified. When their emotions are justified, they have some form of foundation. And whatever that foundation is, they're too afraid to explore. Because when you investigate the Word of God, that foundation is going to be exposed. That foundation will be exposed. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, and know a peace that surpasses all understanding. When you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, you shall not see death. For he is the word, the way, the truth, and the life. How is that, sister? I'm a liar. Everybody's guaranteed to die for something. One day. And, and, and Jesus me. died and was raised on the third day in the incorruptible, in his glory. And as he appears at his coming, when he returns as king, we shall appear in the likeness of his glory. And I thank God for his word of promise. I thank God for the word of truth. That when we see the death, in the flesh yes this flesh is corrupt there's no redeeming this flesh but the spirit is that which will live everlasting 